Welcome everybody. Um, in this uh, section talking about winning your end users, my name is Ivar van der Zand. I'm the SAP Global Head of Analytics and Leonardo Pre-Sales. And uh, before starting, I uh, must ask you to uh, read and understand every single dot and comma of the uh, of the uh, <laughs> of the section over here. So the legal uh, disclaimers, I assume you uh, you have been reading this. Um, so um, before starting, I just wanna share with you a little bit um, on a passion that uh, went slightly uh, out of control. I am in analytics and advanced analytics for 25 years, um, spending all my time uh, on it. And uh, luckily enough, I do not have to pretend that I like my area. It, uh, it comes from myself. So what I do, I maintain uh, this website um, that you uh, might want to have a look at. It's uh, under my own name, evovandezand.com. And I um, almost every two weeks, I share my thoughts on analytics, <clears throat> um, the innovations within analytics, there was uh, also a, a book that you, uh, an ebook that you can download for free. It is a 300-page book with best practices on SAP analytics. I uh, primarily focus on, on SAP analytics. Um, there's countless resources, best practices, and all the things that you hear in the next hour are being covered over there. I also do uh, a, a lot of technical uh, deep dives. So um, please have a look at that, uh, that website. Otherwise, uh, search my name on LinkedIn and connect with me. I share a lot of my thoughts and updates on the websites, also via LinkedIn and, uh, and Twitter. So you know where to find me. So the, uh, the discussion today is about uh, modern uh, analytics and, uh, and insights. And um, the, uh, the key elements that I'm going to touch when discussing winning your end users are some elements that I learned the last years are key to really win end users. And uh, they all touch modern analytics. And I believe that uh, adoption, really uh, getting your end users using your advanced analytics and insights uh, is, is, a, is, is one of the four key elements next to um, end users who really want to have access to insights now and not um, about data that's one minute old or a year old or a week old. They want to be live connected. So next to adoption, live is a second element that I believe is absolutely key if you want really people to use your analytics that you provide. A third element is that everybody wants to run their own cookbook. So they want to have a certain level of self-service capabilities in their uh, analytics, uh, being able to play with the data, to uh, swap, uh, to filter, to interact with it, to add additional sources, to compare, um, so that's that's a third element. And I think a fourth key element about really winning your end users is that your infrastructure, your advanced analytics offering towards your end user must be actionable at any moment. So people, apart from digesting your insights, they should be able to do something with it. Um, before discussing those four elements which make the bigger part of my uh, discussion today um, I um, let me quickly delete this button one moment well, it doesn't want to go away um, before uh, discussing that we uh, we need to have a look at the modern analytics around us so um, if you have a look at this one um, one of the things that you see over here is, uh, I hope you uh, you know what this is. Um, this is the uh, the, the self-driving Tesla car. And um, if you think about the self-driving Tesla car, which is not something that is available next year or uh, within a number of years, but self-driving capabilities like this Tesla car is something that is available today. 
And if you think about what is happening on the screen right here, um, I, I, I hope you are with me when I say this is, this is massively when we're talking, uh, analyzing data and processing data. It uh, touches countless resources, whether it is the data from the car itself and the situation where it's in, whether it is the data of the driver, who's driving this and what is this driver doing or wanting to do. It is the data about the traffic that is currently going on on the roads, whether there are traffic jams or obstacles. And it's of course the data about the environment of this car. You can imagine that online in a live situation, the processing of this element is massive. Um, am I going to highlight that specific topic? No, I'm not. I want to get your interest for two other elements that are crucial looking at something like this. And the first element that I'd like to touch is to explain you that the situation today, as it is being developed by Tesla, is that every mile this car drives, it interacts with a central platform in live mode. It explains that platform, what it sees, what it experiences, and how it did cope with certain situation. Every mile the car drive, that central system gets stronger. And me, using a second Tesla car driving in the same route, maybe one hour later, I can make use of this, um, uh, of this technology and the system, and that's my point, gets better every moment that I'm driving it. And this is what you really see in modern analytics is that we currently using machine learning techniques, elements that makes systems better every moment they are used. A second element that I wanna highlight based on this example of this Tesla car is the business model disruption. On the screen, you see a comparison of the market capital of a company called General Motors, which is not uh, typically the smallest one that we see worldwide compared with Tesla. And you see that the market capital is almost similar. Meaning that modern analytics and embedded machine learning techniques can really disrupt new business models, create new business models and allow you to be competitive and better than your competition as we are, uh, as you could be today. And the numbers over here are amazing. If you see that Tesla uh, has, is, is creating massively more cars than uh, General Motors is creating massively more cars than Tesla. And even in the same time, the market cap of Tesla is almost the same. You can see what handling data using modern analytics, embedded machine learning, can bring you to. A second example that I wanna see where we can really go to with modern analytics and machine learning is this example from uh, the uh, United Emirates, where you see today that we are not able of delivering um, parcels and small packages um, with, with drones. But this is an example of a small plane that uh, can um, bring you from location A to location B and you just consume it as you go. So the only thing you can do is you can go into this little vehicle and there's only two buttons in this vehicle. One button is to open the door and the second button is to change the temperature of the air conditioning. And for the West, you can do nothing. This um, flies and drives completely automatically using modern analytics and machine learning techniques. And that brings us to a conclusion where I say, well, the, the, the business rules are really, really changing, talking modern analytics around us. And <clears throat> if you run with data and we all run with data, we can conclude a number of things. I can say that it's fair to say that currently data 
is really the new gold in winning a competitive edge over your uh, competitors. But working with that same gold in your hands, you start running into issues because information is really everywhere. Yeah, it's about um, uncovering the unknowns. What does my data really say to you, to me? It is about getting insights from massive volumes of transactional data into real insights. It's about, I want to run my analytics now, and I do not want to have a look at data of a situation that was yesterday because I could be too late. It is about bringing insights to the place where they belong. And what do I mean with that? Insights should not be within only your ICT uh, department or your business intelligence competence centers. The insights need to be brought to the place where the, they belong, which is the decision takers in your company. It is about empowering everybody to have instant access to decisions and interacting with data. We already discussed about that. And it's about turning decisions into actions. The digital transformation is basically disrupting everything. And you probably have seen or heard about the examples about disruption that you see on your right hand side many, many times. And to just highlight, if you look at the biggest accommodation company in the world that handles almost uh, the, by far the biggest part of uh, sleepovers and accommodations per year, that company called Airbnb does not own one single hotel themselves, although they are the biggest accommodation company in the world. The biggest company in the world handling communications, news and discussions is a company that doesn't type one letter dot or comma themselves. It's called Facebook. And that is what I mean to say what is modern, uh, modern business models and where does disruption lead us. I'd like to share with you an example that I'm involved in myself, which is a big, big Italian tire company. And they create that we all know. And um, they produce, of course, tires for trucks. And what they have done a few years ago, they started putting in sensors in every truck tire they produce. And those sensors, there are various in one tire. And just to give you an idea, one simple truck has typically 18 tires. And those sensors measure 24 hours per day, 365 days per year. And they generate massive volumes of data. This company is, of course, measuring uh, using those sensors to see whether they can predict when a tire needs to be maintained or they can predict when a tire might collapse. They even go a step further. They connect that data to their supplier channel to automatically have somebody coming over to repair the tire when it's needed. This company, of course, had the choice to provide that data uh, to the owners of the trucks, the big logistics company that are countless in the world. Yeah? So the people really uh, owning the trucks, the transportation companies. And, but this company that I'm talking about did not provide that data to those transportation companies. They did not provide it. What they did is they sell that data. And that is new business model disruption. By selling that data, this company who is a traditional tire manufacturer now generates almost 9% of their annual revenue is based upon data brokerage selling data. It is already almost 10% of the annual revenue that 
gives them this competitive edge towards the competition. That is what I'm talking about if I say modern analytics can really leverage business model disruption. We also know that I already stated that the data, today's data is your new gold, or you could say the new fuel into the digital world. And it's a well-known fact that today's top companies, top enterprises in the world, 78% of all their decisions are data driven. Yeah, and that, that says something, that is an important fact that should uh, awake all of you in this session. And um, it is about um, data-driven decision based upon real-time data coming from everywhere. Data should not come only from corporate data, it could be from outside data. And why is it that this number is so high? Well, it is for a number of reasons. First of all, modern analytics, modern measuring techniques like um, uh, internet, mobile, using censoring techniques, uh, uh, collaboration between two parties, um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, but even blockchain, all these techniques are today feasible to us. And to give you an example about feasibility, have a look at this video about brand recognition. You see on the little dots that this is a machine learning technique used by uh, big broadcasters that automatically recognize your branding on any broadcast they do. Yeah, so you as a customer, if you are interested in your brand uh, uh, recognition, you can use these techniques to automatically monitor and screen every broadcast there is to see how your brand uh, is doing and how popular your branding is. This is called brand recognition using embedded machine learning techniques. It's a very nice example about modern analytics being feasible. But the next element, of course, is that also modern analytics have become um, affordable. If you uh, look at this uh, simple graph where I uh, explained, uh, for example, how car censoring uh, got, uh, I would say, cheaper almost 300 times. Yeah? Storage, is we all know and we all face that every day, is becoming really affordable over now. A third element why modern analytics and business disruption can be successful is that we have proven facts, and, and the examples I gave are just examples, but I, we have proven facts by the IDCs, by the gardeners and the foresters, that it's really viable that business disruption pays off, that you can really win co uh, towards your competition and create new revenue streams using modern analytics. Well, if we make that step to modern analytics, then I think apart from the four key elements, there was another thing that is absolutely crucial uh, when applying modern analytics. I believe, and this is my own opinion, uh, which, which I, I think I'm not alone in the world, is that if you talk modern analytics, you need to look at um, solutions that allow you not only to monitor your your data to, to traditionally use your business intelligence techniques uh, creating your insights but you must combine that with uh, real-time planning and budgeting and predictive uh, techniques and what do i mean with that you need to have a uh, platform that has the closed loop of um, business intelligence, planning and predictions where you can, I would say, step in at any moment in time. To give you an example, in the traditional flow, you might be interested to use your monitoring or BI techniques 
to look at your stock performance in certain regions and based on the outcome that might lead you to adjust um, your budgets and planning uh, you see your stock levels change and you want to on the fly adjust your planning numbers that should be possible based upon your bi um, uh, conclusions and that might lead you that you want to run a number of predictive models to um, redo your automated rolling forecast that is a example of stepping in into this loop it could also be the other way around one of your suppliers your key suppliers uh, is underperforming and you decide to, uh, to, to replace your key supplier by three smaller new suppliers. Before doing that, you might want to use predictive algorithms and predictive models to see the effect on your final SLAs. That might lead you to adjusting your planning and you might want to use your BI to see and to monitor whether the changes you applied really do the things you expected them to do. So that's another way of stepping in into this closed loop portfolio. So, and I think modern analytics, if you um, start working with that and if you consider stepping into that mechanism which i believe you have to do um, modern analytics my advice to everybody in the school is that you have to look at um, uh, i would say platforms or techniques that combine those three elements in one environment and one of the things uh, that we do in the company i work for is that we have those closed loop solutions available if you look at the top uh, piece of my slide you see one of the analytics cloud and digital boardroom solutions we have which really combine in one tool one not two or three one tool combine that full closed loop where you can step into the process at any moment in time while being live connected while providing the interactivity uh, and the self-service capabilities that we will discuss later on. So to make that step from um, having a look around us with uh, digital transformation, model disruption, modern analytics, machine learning techniques, I'd like now to step into the discussion of today really about winning your end users where we concluded that four elements were key of doing that one is adoption uh, the second one is being live connected i believe self-service capabilities running your own cookbook is essential and of course the fact that you need to be actionable on um, on everything you get insights of well let's start with that adoption element and i believe that um, your insights platform uh, is only as good as its recurring number of users. Um, that's a very simple KPI, but I have been with countless customers the last 20 years with tremendously nice built um, analytic platforms with the best dashboards you can think of, anything, but still their end users uh, do not access it or do not use it. That is a key element of, um, of adoption that you must monitor. And I believe every one of you should, after this call, have a look at their own analytics infrastructures and just go to the internal dashboards of your applications, looking how trustworthy and how loyal your end users are, because we, users not recurring are users lost. And a thing that I'd like to ask your attention for, and that I believe is a key element over here, is that if you consider why those people never uh, come back to, uh, to your platform or do not access it, it could be by very simple reasons. Yeah, they, uh, they, they probably looking for uh, one place where they can find all insights. And let's be honest, I think every big enterprise today has at least four or five different BI solutions. Um, 
the finance department probably uses something else than a marketing department. Uh, I have to log on to five different platforms. This is how very quickly you will lose your end users. And I think that um, a key element is if you consider of if you could have one place where you can really have a kind of a, let's call it a catalog, where your users can access any insights, whether it's a PowerPoint, it's an Excel, it is a cloud um, uh, analytics product, it's an on-premise analytics product, it is a product of supplier A, SAP, or it's a product of supplier B, Tableau, or it's a product of supplier C, Click. One place where they can access anything because your end users do not even care how the insight is created or with what, what tooling. Well, there was a very nice solution, which is called SAP Analytics Hub, which I will show you in a second. That is really providing you the solution for that and probably helps you overcoming that um, adoption issue. And um, it is, like I said, it is a solution where you really have one place, regardless of the technique platform uh, of the inside uh, technologies background. So whether it is cloud, whether it's on premise, whether it is um, a local Excel, it's a PowerPoint, it doesn't matter. And users just want to go to one place, click it and consume the insights. Um, fully authored, of course, and governed because I only um, uh, should see the insights that I'm entitled to see. And it should be a platform where I can use, just use simple text search to find anything. It is also, Analytics Hub is also very interesting if you're running large and complex taxonomy principles, which you can fully manage over there. Well, over here, you see that Analytics Cloud solution running. And, um, I'll, I'll hope you can hear the, the video voiceover now. I think it's a very, uh, very interesting uh, element. Another element about integration is that um, um, we, we are in a situation where we really, um, if, you, if you look at buy model IT, if you look at, 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 at the, the two big chunks of information management systems, systems of records, the traditional ERP and CRM system, systems, to give you two examples, versus um, systems of intelligence that uh, I think uh, as part of modern analytics, we really need to be able to, to integrate those, those. And I think it's another um, nice example over here that you see in modern analytics, that it's now possible to really uh, use modern analytics platforms 
as part of your systems of records. And you see an example over here where we won the SAP Analytics Cloud environment embedded into Salesforce. Yeah, So this is not what you probably expect that we won Analytics Cloud on top of um, this sample application called Salesforce where we just access data. No, these are examples where we really embed our application using the latest APIs as part embedded into those systems of records. And I think these elements over here are really key when we're talking adoption of, uh, of, of modern analytics in your organization. A second element I already discussed is the need from end users to really look at data in live mode, meaning that they see the data as they occur now and not one minute ago or 10 minutes ago. The, um, the, the, the market agility, the competitive edges, the uh, enormous requirement of um, the environment around us to act now and not tomorrow is really a need to have live access to your information and not work with population processes and whatever, um, but really using modern analytics to connect live. And this live connectivity is uh, also part in the SAP analytics um, tooling. And to give you one example, we this week um, in mid-October, we launched wave 20 of SAP Analytics Cloud, which uh, really allows you, and it's just an example, that you can connect now to SAP BW or SAP BW for HANA or on HANA in live mode, meaning there is no data leaving your um, network. There is no data, no data replication, and there is no data preparation. There's even no data post-processing being done by Analytics Cloud. The only thing that leaves your internal network um, is the metadata that provides us the visualizations and the insights. And this is technique that is available today. And the BW example is an example of a live connection. It's just one example. Live connections today are also possible, for example, to uh, modern SAP HANA in memory systems or even to on-premise universes, allowing you to use Analytics Cloud in a hybrid mode, connecting and leverage the um, the analytics that you might already have deployed with um, SAP business objects on premise. The features are enormous and uh, being live connected, you can now do uh, condition and exceptions. You can do on the fly filtering. You can even use variables. And one of the things that is very interesting is that you can even with the latest um, uh, versions, Wave 20 of Analytics Cloud, you can even do calculations in live mode on the fly. This is tremendous technique, really new, and um, I think a, a, a uh, really game changer in live connectivity that only SAP can bring. Uh, it is not available to um, uh, software around us. And this live access is over here, uh, indicated again, you see it especially on the right hand side with the BW and, um, and, and, and HANA live access, as for HANA of course, and also to universes. Um, you see that we also combine that with acquisition uh, connectors, acquisition connectors are um, connectors that have another technique. They access the data sources and they um, bring the data uh, from that source into the cloud first and then make it available. We offer now both, um, both types of connectors. And on the left-hand side, you see a variety of the things we can do in acquisition mode. If you look a little bit at the planning that SAP foresees, especially for the left-hand side of the screen, the acquisition mode, then you will see in the 
time coming that we will more and more and more also start providing live connectors towards cloud-based applications uh, that you see some examples on the screen. So that's a bit on the roadmap um, going, going on. A very nice example about using live connectivity is this example uh, analyzing train delays uh, based on um, uh, data that we have for three months uh, of, of, of data. And what you see are the typical KPIs that train companies use. You see the three big numbers in the screen. It is all trains being four minutes too late, five minutes too late, or six minutes too late. And this is Analytics Cloud uh, brought into digital boardroom mode where you can see various of the things we discussed regarding winning your end users. The interactivity that you see, I can simply select uh, the types of trains that I'm interested in and all the graphs are adjusted using conditional formatting. This is a live mode that I'm now connected. You uh, see I can uh, quickly hoover and get my metadata. I can drill down, like you see over here, I want to see uh, the days in the week or the weekends, a split per weekend. Um, and I have uh, also, you see over here, if I hoover, I get all the information and I can drill up again and all the graphs, also the two uh, graphs on the right hand side of the screen automatically adjust. Interactivity is also an end user that can very easily go to a map select a polygon uh, tool and just select an area on the map, filter it, and you will see that all analysis, as I defined over here, are automatically adjusted. You also see on my bottom left-hand side, those green, red, and black colored graphs that compare on the fly planning and budgeting metrics. I can switch screens very easily, drill down in any type of uh, element I wanna see, and again, over here, very simply go to a, uh, a graph uh, that provides me more or a geo map that provides me more uh, detail. Interactivity is also indicated over here. And this is a massive volume of data that I'm accessing in live mode right now that I can choose my time, frame, time frames on the fly. I can even choose on the left hand side, the start and the end station, and you will see that all the filters automatically adjust. If I say Leuven or Louvain should be my end station, you see the full filters on the left hand side automatically adjusting. There's also, I can go a step further and quickly look into root cause analysis. This is the uh, ranking of the uh, top 15 worst performing um, trains in this time period. And I can sim simply click the number one and you see that it drives all the other graphs in live mode and simply shows where the train delays are built up. I can even use modern heat maps techniques to say I'm interested. I see color red, the area where there's an issue. I can take it, drill down over the um, attribute I want and say I want to have a more detailed view over here in detail. Yeah, and this provides me with exactly those color-coded areas where things go wrong. I mentioned in the beginning the closed loop portfolio, and here you see that in the same tool, I do not leave the tool, I'm in the same application, I have my forecast planning and budgeting numbers, and I can even do on-the-fly simulation. It has embedded IBCS and HICO charts, and I just simply click the simulation button, adjust my metrics over here and say, well, I think my, uh, I wanna change my forecast with, uh, well, maybe uh, 200 or something. I just uh, type, type, type in something uh, and, and, and see the effect coming through. This is automatically calculated on the fly. You see that happening over here, by the way. And I can really easily on the right hand side see my forecast simulation, which you see indicated in the legend on the top. All live mode on the fly. I can even have a look using another type of connector uh, comparing my data with, for example, in this case, the incidents that occur somewhere on the infrastructure. I've compared that over here where I, I compared two huge 
data sources as an end user comparing how incidents really affect my uh, train delays and you can see on the screen right now that there is a correlation and I can simply uh, very simply uh, pinpoint to the exact issue caused where and take the action that we discussed that we need to take. Yeah. So um, the real outlook that SAP wants for uh, the next time is that we will develop more live blending scenarios where you can also blend your data sources in live mode. And as said, we will um, focus on creating more live connectors to our existing cloud applications like uh, Conquer, SuccessFactors, and Aweba. That's all coming up. A third element that is key of winning your end users is, uh, oops, let me go back, is of course the, uh, the, uh, the self-service mode that we discussed. So really cooking your own cookbook. And if you discuss that one, then we quickly end up in the traditional discussion between the provider of the analytics infrastructure, typically your ICT or BICC competence center, the people driving and owning the, 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 the platform versus the people using it. And if you look at the interest of those people who provide the analytics infrastructure, they are very keen on delivering governed and correct data. It should by all means be, uh, be adequate. And of course, they are interested that you interact with the data and that you can work relatively autonomously. How more an end user can work autonomously, autonomously the less annoying calls they get. And um, another thing for them very important is that modern analytics have end-to-end uh, -end lineage capabilities. And what do I mean with lineage is that um, if Insights, for example, would have seven data sources and one of those data sources is down for whatever reason, these people are very interested in understanding very quickly what Insights, dashboards or reports are affected when one of my data sources is down. Yeah, but it also goes the other way around. They are also very interested with their lineage that if an end user says, I, uh, this report is uh, not correct, something is going wrong. Data lineage provides them really easy with the capabilities saying this report is built up uh, through those models and through those specific data sources and those data elements. That is data lineage. This is what is in the interest of the provider of the analytics infrastructure versus the interest of the user that is really um, interested in very their insights and, and, the, and the techniques they are using. It, sh it should be as simple as possible, not too many features. The data should be non-susceptible, so anything should be crystal clear. They are looking for an environment uh, to understand, and we showed it in the video, one place that they can access all their insights, maybe a few kickstart um, data sets and dashboard that they can use to go further in their analysis. And for them, crystal clear is that they by all means can collaborate and comment in any place in their analytics environment. And so a typical use case is uh, what you see with these people is that they, uh, they access your corporate data and they say, well, I have additional data, what, uh, what, what should I do? And then that brings me to the principle of everybody can count to four. And you probably don't know who this person is on the screen right now. Um, it is somebody that I know in Belgium. He's on my television every single day because this person is Mr. Jeroen Meus. And very interesting if you, uh, and that's the reason why I bring him up in this discussion. If you look how a television cook is, uh, is, is using um, uh, analytics or is, is, is using, uh, 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 creating his meal, then this television cook really goes in four steps. And those four steps are the exact same four steps using analytics. Yeah, the television cook starts by opening the fridge. And in that fridge, he finds the, uh, the uh, 
the the ingredients that the television cook wants to use that single day yeah this is what we call the acquire acquire mode and the next step that the television cook does is the moment that he took out some of the ingredients from his fridge he starts uh, cleaning them he starts seasoning them he starts mixing them he starts cutting them this is what we do with analytics in terms of creating hierarchies joining data sets uh, creating a formula doing some data quality issues this is really the enrich phase a four, third step that the um, that the television cook does is that he uh, actually starts cooking and uh, bringing the ingredients into the stove or into the pots and starts cooking and that is typically something that goes relatively quickly and this is the same with modern analytics the moment that your data is enriched and is of quality and you have combined everything creating the actual analysis and the graphs and the dashboards is really simple and you end up as a television cook saying my meal is ready i now need to share and collaborate it um, the cook can do that in two ways he can do that a la carte yeah i created this meal for you you requested this specific meal um, medium done with a few additional potatoes and you wanted two vegetables well you can do that with analytics too or you can go in a buffet mode buffet mode where you say no i'm not asking my specific end user what they want to use i just create a various number of meals and I put them on a big buffet and my end user can just decide for himself or herself whether they want to start with two desserts and end their meal with a soup or go the other way around. And that's the same with modern analytics. This is the process how you work. And that's why I use the analogy of a television cook. And here you see, and this is an example of on-premise software. This is an example of Lumira 2.0, how you can very easily just open the fridge like I do over here and pick up some data about retail and I make a few very simple graphs and I've created some of the formulas on the top left hand side. I just bring that in and I, uh, me as an end user, I quickly create these insights and at a certain moment I come to the conclusion that uh, this is real good stuff and my manager likes it and I might want to uh, bring this into a professional environment over here's my second data set by the way yeah which I just blended well I created these simple insights and what you can do with a, a modern analytics tool like Lumira 2.0 you just provide your very simple assets to watch your business intelligence competence center or your power users who pick it up like I do over here and um, I would say uh, make it professional using designer element of Lumira 2.0. I'm here in Lumira 2.0 designer using the exact same data as one minute ago. And just with additional efforts, uh, I create this very nice dashboard that is fully interactive. You uh, have all the KPIs on top. You have color coded uh, trending indicators with the arrows over there. The end user can interact with this. This is really uh, professionalized. You can filter on the fly. You have a screen that provides you written information, but also clickable information. And I can simply click an area like, for example, key metrics, which brings me to another page with all key metrics and again this is based on the very simple analysis i did with interactive menus so over here you see uh, that i uh, can have cascading filtering over uh, of course yeah so if i uh, select quarter three my month should also only be seven eight and nine as you can see over here so cascading filtering is embedded for example in modern analytics it's a key element for your end users yeah, and uh, or I can change the other one again with um, cascading filtering. This is an example of Canada. So I should only see Canada right now. I can zoom in just a few of examples I wanted to share with you to show you what modern analytics is. It is typically multi-page. Analytics Cloud is the same way as this one. This is an, an on-premise example. This is really what I mean with 
um, end users being able to interact with the data and just simply slice and dice. So I click, for example, over here, the DVD players, and you will see that it drives all the other graphs. So cross chart interactivity is another element that I believe is key whenever you want to offer modern analytics to your end users. This is an element where end users, for example, can interact with the data and change the type of graphs. Yeah, so I want to see a pie or a bar chart. I can simply select that and change it. And again, all the filters that I've set up apply, of course. Another piece of modern analytics is that end users want to swap dimensions. I click and it changes the attribute, for example, that I use my analytics. Or in looking over time, this shows an indication how the involvement of this metric was over time. Just a few of those examples that I like to share with you that I believe are key in modern analytics. Um, and we... Um, I'm going to skip uh, this video a little bit, of course, with uh, geospatial elements. I refer to my website where you see so many of these examples that I've all built myself, showing you what we can really do with modern analytics. And yes, of course, your end users want to export the data set, print it or bring it to PDFs. Um, the, oops, the last element of um, winning your end users is about your data and analytics and insights platform being actionable. And that brings me to a discussion on monetizing your, uh, your data, but also having it uh, really uh, uh, actionable. That is a huge topic that I prefer to have a separate session over here on this platform, but just to highlight a few of those elements. One of the things that we see in modern analytics tools right now is that these tools have embedded algorithms that help the end user taking the action. So this is, for example, an example of analytics cloud where we have smart discovery and smart insights applications where you can very simply, as you see on the screenshot, click an element, a certain matrix, and say, dear product, can you please explain to me which attribute or which part of an attribute correlates the most to this metric? Meaning you can uh, do a kind of a, I would say, decision tree to really see what attribute, what dimension influences a certain metric the most, because I want to take action over there. Another example about, about such embedded algorithms is that we now have modern analytics having on the fly time series forecasting for you. Yeah? So the moment a measure changes, you can automatically on the fly, on the fly, generate uh, a, a time series forecast. Also, if you filter or you make certain selections. So that's really a key element in, in modern analytics. Another element is data brokerage and data monetizing. That is a, uh, a key play that will be trending and very new the next few years. And you will see me writing and talking about it a lot. That is about using your transactional details to, I would say, aggregate them and anonymize those and see whether you can broker that data as industry trending indicator. And um, it is about, it's a play about improving business uh, efficiency or starting new revenue streams. And we do that with a division within SAP called the SAP Data Network. And maybe I need to give you a very simple example. You can probably, if you look at the telco industry, you probably will, will learn that or will understand that they have exact information where you and I walk through cities every single moment of the day. They use our um, cell phones and our smartphones and they have access to the data where we are using their 4G networks. You can imagine if they anonymize and aggregate that information that is 
superb and very valuable information to the retail industry because it will tell the retail industry what are the best places to open new stores yeah based on the behavior that you and i have walking through the cities and we spend maybe a bit more time in that street and a bit less time on that corner of that street well imagine that telco industry starts aggregating those data and selling it to the retail industry and by the way it's already happening today this is really about disrupting and creating new business models and i'd like to end up my presentation with an example where we did similar with our field class application where we have countless cloud users customers today and in this example you see a lady that runs a development team for software and she is looking for a new java developer and she logs into her field class application and she has over there also access to the aggregated data that we aggregated and anonymized for all our field class uh, users so she can compare her own search with the general availability of resources worldwide. Have a look at the video. I, uh, I think it's a very nice example of what we can do with aggregated data. This uh, brings me to the end of my uh, presentation. I um, open it up now for questions. Let me have a look in the uh, um, let me have a look in the uh, in the chat box. All right. Thank you for your attention. Bye bye.